Hello, in this video I'm going to solve the following problem for you. This is a problem on the topic of complex numbers basics. Let us read the problem together first. Consider the following complex number. z equals to 1 plus cosine theta plus sine theta i all over 1 plus cosine theta minus sine theta times i. Here theta is a real number that is not an integer multiple of pi. The reason is clear, because if theta is an integer multiple of pi, then sine theta is zero, cosine theta is minus one, and it means that the denominator vanishes, which is not, of course, possible. What is this combination? Real part of z squared minus imaginary part of z squared in its simplest possible form. That would be a good idea if you pause the video at this point and try to solve the problem yourself first. If you do your calculations correctly, the answer that you will get is cosine 2 theta. Okay, so now let us solve the problem together. Okay, in order to answer this question mark, I need to know the real parts of my complex number and imaginary parts of my complex number. But of course, my complex number is still not in a standard form. So I have to make it uh, the standard, I, I have to transform it into the standard form and then read the real part and the imaginary parts. But because I don't want to make the calculations complicated, I want to introduce some uh, the variables in. So I would say that let 1 plus cosine theta, let me call it A, and sine theta, let me call it B. Okay, then what happens to my Z? Z becomes equal to A plus BI over A minus BI. And now, uh, the algebra becomes a little bit simpler. So now you, the standard trick is to multiply this fraction by the conjugate of the denominator. So I will write this down and I multiply both the numerator and the denominator by the conjugate of the denominator, which in this case is a plus bi. Okay, the denominator when multiplied forms the conjugate rule and it becomes a squared plus b squared. And the numerator, I have to multiply a plus bi by itself, which becomes a plus bi squared. And then I raise the numerator to power 2, it becomes the first one squared, plus 2 times the first one times the second one, and plus the second one squared, which of course becomes b squared i squared, but i squared is minus 1, so it becomes minus b squared. And the denominator is a squared plus b squared. Now, if I separate them, I can write this in this form finally. So z becomes, I take a squared and minus b squared and then divide it by a squared plus b squared. That forms the real part of my complex number. And then I have 2ab and then I divide that part by a squared plus b squared. And of course, I have an i here. So it becomes clear that this one is the real part and this one is the imaginary part. So the real part of the complex number z is a squared minus b squared over a squared plus b squared. But of course, a and b are the variables that I brought in to simplify my calculations. I have to switch back to the original variable, which is theta. So I will do that. So this becomes equal to, in the denominator, instead of a, I put 1 plus cosine theta to the power of 2, and then plus b squared, which is sine theta squared. And in the numerator, I will have 1 plus cosine theta to the power of 2 minus sine theta to the power of 2. Okay, so let us try to simplify this expression. So I expand that. So in the numerator, I will have 1 plus 2 times the first one times the second one and plus the second one squared. And then I have minus sine 
theta squared. And in the denominator, I will do the same. So it becomes 1 plus 2 cosine theta plus cosine theta squared. And then I will have plus sine theta squared. Okay. So now let us see what happens. I can simplify things. Okay, here, sine squared plus cosine squared gives me 1. And there is another 1 here, so it gives me 2. And there is a 2 here, so I can factor the 2 out. So it becomes 2, 1 plus cosine theta. But in the numerator, I have 1 here minus sine theta squared here, which gives me cosine theta squared. But this cosine theta squared and this cosine theta squared now becomes 2 cosine theta squared. And between this cosine theta and these two cosine theta squared, I can factor a 2 cosine theta out. So it becomes 2 cosine theta, and then I will have 1 plus cosine theta. Okay, and then you see that things are simplified quite a lot. So this factor and that factor are gone. These two and that two are also gone. So what I will get finally is that the real part of my complex number is equal to cosine theta. Okay, very simple. Okay, I want to do the same calculation for my imaginary part, but if you look, the denominator of the imaginary part is exactly the same as the denominator of the real part. And the denominator of the real part, I already calculated that, and it in its simplest possible form is this one. Okay, the imaginary part of z, yes, is equal to. This expression, as I told you before, is exactly that. So I will copy and paste that part. So it is 2, 1 plus cosine theta. But in the numerator, I have 2 times a times b. This is a and this is b. So it is just 2 a times b. Okay. And now again, I can simplify quite a lot. These two are gone. And what is left for me is just simply sine theta. So the imaginary part of the complex number here is just sine theta. Okay, but what is the uh, question mark? The question mark is, what is the real part of z squared minus the imaginary part of z squared? Yes, which becomes cosine theta squared minus sine theta squared. And this is nothing except cosine to theta. And that is what we are supposed to show. Okay, I hope that this video was useful for you. Until the next video, be safe and goodbye. Thank you.